Hi everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week I challenge myself to see if I can take eight white ash bowls and get them to their first coat of finish in one day. All right, what we have here is eight white ash bowls. Uh, this is a commission that is long overdue to the point of almost two years. So I thought I'd do a little challenge with myself to see if I can get these all turned in one day. Now we did start a little late. It is 11.38 and um, we may have to carry on with this again tomorrow. But the goal is to see if I can get these basically all into the first coat of finish in one day. So let's get started. So these bowls come to me from a customer that's been uh, a long time customer and she is what I call a total purist. She does not like inlay and she does not like any sort of resin. So if there's any fixes to be made and there's really only one or two spots that need to be fixed on these bowls, then it will be fixed with clear CA glue, but the rest of it will be left natural and I know there's a lot of people like her out there. The only thing that I did off camera was put the glue blocks on the bottom. So, you know, that's probably about 15 minutes there. So the way that this video is going to run, the first bowl that you're viewing right now is going to be kind of done the same way that I usually do it. And then the other seven bowls are going to be done in a time lapse. We haven't done one of those before, so I thought it'd be interesting to to do that. The only problem with the time lapse is there's no sound. So that's the only issue with doing the time lapse. But other than that, it'd be interesting to see what you guys think about it. If you're new here and you haven't seen any of my work before, I like to use the 5 8 bowl gouge from David Ellsworth on the Straight Wood Projects. Uh, there is a link in the description if you want to get one. This one came from Lee Valley here in Canada, but they do ship to the U.S. as well. And if you take a look at how I'm using it, you'll see how when you go, go down into the belly of the bowl, the gouge goes above center and then it drops down right into the very center part of the bowl. Years ago I bought David Ellsworth's CD or sorry DVD on how to uh, basically use this gouge so you know that's I'm trying to mimic the same cuts that he did in his video and hopefully I'm doing it justice. These are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca and there is a link in the description to get 10% off your next order. Just use code InlayGym at checkout. 
I keep getting asked to do sanding in real time. So I'm, don't worry, I'm just going to do it with the 60 grit just to give you a sense of speed and, you know, how fast I'm going. So this drill does 2400, 2400 RPM. And so that means I want to run my lathe at 1200 RPM if possible. I find that two to one ratio tends to work quite well. So give that a try if, uh, you're, if you seem to be having issues. When you get down to the base of the bowl where I'm going right now, you'll see that I move that sanding and pad around. If you stay stationary in the very bottom of that, that bowl, that's where a lot of side grain is, and it's very easy to divot the bowl. So right now the lathe is running forward and my drill is in reverse. And the other thing is when I move to the outside of this piece, you're gonna notice that there's a ring around the sandpaper. Now that comes from just sanding on the inside. The rest of that sandpaper on that sanding pad there, you can see it right now, is actually still new. So even if that sandpaper is worn out on the inside, go to the outside of the bowl, sand that bowl, the same as you did on the inside. And then if you need to do more sanding on the inside with the same grit, get a new piece of paper and then sand it on the inside. For the next grit, the lathe is now going in reverse and the drill is forward. And I do that with each grit. So there's the first one, 1228. That's slow by my standards so uh, I've got to pick up the pace here that's for sure and what I'm going to do is put finish on all of them at the same time and uh, but you know I really like ash I like the two tone color between the heartwood you know it's just it's a real pretty wood it is very grainy this piece does have a little black streak in it Typically you see that when there's metal in the tree, but I don't think that that's the case with this. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a really pretty wood and it takes a really nice finish too. Here's the bottom. Um, anyway, on to the next one. So here is the time-lapse footage. And what I will do is basically turn each bowl and at the end of the turning and the sanding of that bowl I'll take it off the lathe and we'll have a look at it. Uh, take note of body position where my hands are. Uh, you'll note that a lot of times the the gouge will be right up against my hip or kind of drove into my hip and I find that that really steadies the gouge up and I do have a fair bit of down pressure with my thumb when it's on the tool rest as well so you know you're gonna have to turn with both hands if you want to do bowls it's not always right-handed or left-handed so this is maybe one time that maybe lefties have the advantage growing up in a right-handed world we just uh something that we dealt with our whole lives and um yeah so Anyway, very curious to see what you think about this kind of time-lapse footage to, to have a look at it and to give you a good sense of basically what it takes to be a production turner and how fast things have to be in order to really make a buck at this, uh, this business. One of the reasons why I stay away from bowls typically like this is because I... I seen the need right off the bat that you need it to be unique in the wood turning world in order to make it. And that's where all my inlay started at. There's a the second one. It's actually got some little burls down in there. Don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick that up or not. It's a little burly figure right here. I'd like to hit that right. Yeah, geez, can't do it. Right where my thumb is. This one does have a crack in it. And it's been just filled with thin CA glue. Tilt this light up a bit here. There it is, thin CA glue. Hopefully when the finish goes on, that'll blend in a little better. Um, yeah. Tiny little burls. 
All right, that is what do we got here? 132. Number three coming up. I am doing the largest bowls first, so later on as we go, hopefully it'll be a little easier because they'll be a little smaller. Getting back to trying to be unique. Uh, so anyway, before I really decided to try and go down this wood turning path, my wife and I would go to shows and we would look. And, you know, you walk into into um, a guy's or a girl's booth and it would be all the same stuff. It's just straight wood. And don't get me wrong, I I, I think wood is an absolutely beautiful thing. But, you know, it's, it's a very competitive market. And your sanding, your finishing has to be supreme. And if you can make yourself unique on top of that, and like I said earlier, that's where all my inlay ideas came from. I realized that that wasn't really a thing out in my local area anyway. And that's where that all was spurred from. Uh, being unique typically will always work in your in your favor when it comes to the wood turning world. And now with the resin, that's even added another dimension to it as well. So pretty soon I'm going to be combining the two of them and we will see that on the channel as well. 211. This is very similar to the second one. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I guess there's no cracks or anything like that. It's quite a clean bowl actually. Pretty stuff. And I'm like I said I'm gonna put the finish on all at the end and it's gonna really make this especially this dark heartwood, really pop. Number four coming up. So with the large bowl that had the crack in it, I definitely would have put some sort of an inlay in there with branches or soapstone or mussel shells, oyster shells, whatever. Uh, typically on the sides, I like to stick to just um, either alabaster, soapstone, or brass brass is quite popular as well so you know these were a commission so i know that she doesn't really care for any of that stuff so that's why that just ended up with the clear ca uh, i also want you to take note of the dust that you see in coming off this and that's why i'm wearing a self-powered respirator and of course i'm wearing hair protection as well uh, because after a while if you're using that drill all day it can be quite hard on your hearing there's number four, nothing overly spectacular to talk about. Again, tiny little burls, kind of neat. And I do mean tiny, small little burls. Can get some light here, see them? Tiny little guys. Number five coming up. By the way, that is uh, 2.50 is what the time is. In that last bowl, the balance of that bowl was actually pretty close to being perfect. And what I mean by that is, so if you look at the end grain that's, you know, basically running north and south, you've got those two eyes on the left and right side. So when those eyes are pretty much <laughs> the same size, then you know that that bowl is absolutely perfectly balanced, even though the end grain itself wasn't balanced on that bowl. And again, just look at that dust. If, you know, if you're not using a respirator when you're wood turning and you're sanding like this, I mean, you're, you're really taking a risk. So do yourself a favor and get yourself a respirator of some sort. I am using the Air Shield Pro. That's what I'm using. And this is actually the third one that I've owned. So uh, that, that kind of goes to show you, I, I pretty much had to replace it every two years when I was in full production and what would happen is the the shroud would stretch out and the headbands were breaking and the other thing too is the batteries are just 
oh, it's just ridiculously expensive. You know, over a hundred dollars for a battery and a little, you know, just just ridiculous money to for replacement parts for them. So, you know, I will be looking for something when this one wears out, something different. I haven't exactly I know I don't know exactly what I want yet, but if you've got a self-powered respirator and it's something you really like, then um Hit me in the uh, comments and let me know what you're what you're using, and your pros and cons on it. That would be greatly appreciated. There's number five. The only thing that's really interesting about this is the little, almost like a branch growth down here. See that? Again, more little burl figure right here. First time I've really noticed this in ash before, and it could be just this tree too. But yeah, number six coming up. So take note of when I'm sanding the outside of this piece. Uh, you know, I'm no different than everybody else. As we get older, you start having issues with your joints. And uh, so when I'm working, when I'm sanding the outside, I you'll see me tuck the drill into my side like I am there. I've got a little natural shelf, you know, it's called a gut. And uh, I just find that that's easier to, to do that and sway back and forth on your hips. It takes uh, a lot of strain off your arms. Here's number six. Nothing overly spectacular about it. Pretty plain Jane stuff. Super white, as you can probably tell in there. One thing I've noticed is the growth rings in here near the very center of the tree are a lot tighter than they are further on outside of it. So it makes you wonder if maybe that was growing in a dense forest and then maybe it was cleared away and then it was able to grow a little better. I always find that interesting when I'm looking at end grain. And the, and the way, I, the reason I say that is because the rings are, are wider, which means, you know, it had a, a better growing season. I gotta admit though, I'm burning out. Time is 4.10. I don't know how most people approach these situations, you know, when, you, when you've got sort of a production setting. I typically like to do all the difficult stuff first, because I know near the end of the day, as you start to fatigue and get tired, uh, you really don't want to be dealing with the difficult stuff. So that's why I always deal with the difficult stuff first, and then hopefully near the end, when you're starting to burn out, it's just kind of like, oh, this is a lot easier. Well, there's number seven. It's mostly all heartwood. There's the only sapwood that there is. <laughs> the rest of this is all heart. I know it might be a little hard to pick up. Lights are kind of bright. Turn that one off. Yeah, that's a little better. Nothing overly special. Whew, last one coming. Some people might also wonder why I kind of put those bowls on with as much force as I do. And the reason for that is because of sanding in reverse and forward. So in the past, I've put them on fairly easy and then 
all of a sudden you're sanding and everything starts getting wobbly and off it comes. So that's why I usually lock them, them um, those face plates on to the lathe with a fair bit of force. There's number eight. And it's almost all, I eh, know, I guess there's some wood there. Eh. A lot of hurt wood. Hard to really even notice it. Early wood and late wood. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll show one, the very, I don't know, first bowl that we did. I'll throw that on the lathe. We'll do a coat of finish, and then I'll do the rest of them, and I'll show you afterwards the whole thing. Whew, I'm beat. All right, so what I've got in here is Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. This is also a fairly common request. Uh, people really want me to slow down the the application of the finish. So this is in real time. I'll show I'll show you on the inside. The first coat of finish is always going to go on heavier than any other coats that you put on. Uh, you'll see later on in the video here that you know the next day you could barely tell that there was any finish on these bowls at all. So you know. That's typically the speed that I run the lathe at and how fast I apply it as I go from the very center all the way out to the rim of the bowl. Well, there you go. Uh, it certainly helps to bring that alive. That's for, for darn sure. And again, I don't know if you can pick up those rings, how tight they are. And I, of course, they're going to elongate because of the curvature of it. But you can tell, you know, I'm going to estimate after 20 years that the ring's starting to get a little larger. Bigger canopy, I suppose, maybe that might be the, the deal with that. I actually really like ash. It, you'll see in the end here, it takes a really, really high shine, so that's right up my alley. All right, I'm going to do the other seven the same way, and then I'll bring you back over to the table and show you after. By the way, I thought I'd show you, it is 5.03. Well, there you go. There's all eight. It's 5.15 if you're curious. Uh, that's the most production that I've had in a very, very long time. And I am sore. And I must say that that is also with 20 minutes worth of breaks. So, you know, I've got a bad back and I just can't stand for that long without taking a break. There's our little burls. All right, well, we will see you tomorrow for the second coat. Good morning. So the plan is to buff all of the bowls first, and then, I don't know, I might buff, I might use 4 steel wool. To be honest with you, there's really, doesn't feel like there's any finish on here at all. Yeah, I'll probably just give it a very light buffing. And once I've got them all buffed, then we'll do the second coat of finish. This is the Triple E buffing compound from the BL buffing system. And so this is another reason to lock those bowls onto the headstock because they're in reverse when I do the outside. And there's a fair bit of friction there. And again, that bowl with that buffer going we'll spin that bowl right off if it's not locked onto the headstock good all right back again with the waterlux original voc medium sheen there as you can tell it looks a lot more shiny with its second coat Really, really nice. It's too bad about this crack. 
That's the only real flaw in this bowl, but right here, in case the camera's not fixing it, picking up too well. Uh, regardless, I mean, this would be an awesome salad bowl, fruit bowl. All right, I'm sure there will be a third one the same. I'll do it the same as this one, and we'll see when we're do the bottoms. So this ash did in fact take three coats. So what you're seeing here is me parting it from the waste block and you'll see me actually show it right here what it looks like. So as I take the bowls off, I prep the waste block for the next turning that's gonna go on it. And in the past, I would have 20 to 25 bowls a week. This is kind of what my production would be with inlays. I was just pointing out there that the saw gets covered in hot melt glue, so sometimes it's very irritating to uh, to use. So I just take a scraper and scrape it all off, and uh, it's usually good enough for all it needs. Onto the vacuum chuck here, only show three bowls, but uh, again, this uh, this time lapse is kind of a cool thing. I'm actually kind of digging it. Now, typically, because the bottoms are usually all side grain, I start sanding at 180 and go to 320, and usually that is good enough. So this is something that I don't usually show, but I do have a registry in basically every wood turning that I make, well, every bowl that I make anyway, has been registered. So I take the size and mark that down and then register it in my book and give it you know, essentially a, a stock number. So the first two numbers are going to be the year and the last three numbers are going, or sorry, the last four numbers are going to be the number of bowls that I've made to date since recording. Uh, this allows me to be consistent in pricing as uh, everything is, seems to be going up. So, you know, certainly my prices have gone up along with inflation that it's got to or or else you're going to be out of business so anyway i, I really hope that you guys uh enjoyed this video let's have a list, last little chat about this week's project and uh let me know what you think about it well that's it for the video uh so before we talk about this week's project or projects i guess uh, i thought i'd just pass something along i got a nice christmas card from clay clay stevenson to Jim, uh, your work is amazing and I enjoy your videos. Cheers, Clay. Now, Clay has, it's called the Wooden Rooster. That's his business card. And he has Facebook, Instagram, yeah, Facebook and Instagram. And he's on the West Coast. Uh, Okanagan, I think, is where he's, at, where he's at in British Columbia. So, but Clay sent along some, um, some interesting stuff. We've certainly seen this on the channel before, but um, these are mussel shells. And uh, actually it's probably some of the largest mussel shells I think I've ever seen. Uh, we typically, my mussel shells come from the East Coast, so I, we don't usually see them that big on the East Coast. So there's that. And while we haven't done one yet, I do do oyster shell inlays. Uh, typically it looks really nice in dark walnut. So he sent along some really clean, super white oyster shells. So we'll be able to do an inlay with that in the near future, hopefully. And uh, along with that, he also sent me a shirt. Really cool shirt. Uh, I'd, I'd wear it out here, but it's cold. <laughs> I haven't got any heat on. And uh, really cool logo too. I really like the logo. Anyway, thanks Clay, I really appreciate it. Uh, I will put his details in the, the uh, description down below so you can go go out and check him. Uh, I know that he does have a business Facebook. I was just on there, just like this page uh, and Instagram as well. All right, so this week's project. Now I'm just gonna get one of these out. There's the very bottom. And uh, this particular customer wanted a saying put on it. And it's right here. It's roundabout and that's I, I get that a lot from a lot of people that want it want me to do a, a commission for them uh, either birth dates wedding dates uh, all kinds of things I've written on the bottoms of bowls hey it's not a real big deal uh, sometimes if it gets too long then it's you know it can be 
hard to try and get centered and make it look good. So, you know, she was really keen on having around the outside diameter of the foot and I was able to do that on all eight of these bowls. Um, this one, you know, I've never seen these tiny little burls in white ash before. So that was kind of fun. I know it's shiny, sorry, sorry folks. There it is, I don't know if you can pick it up there or not. And uh, three coats of Waterlux for sure. And like I said in the video, I really like ash. Ash takes a really nice polish. As you can see, it's quite shiny, uh, but it is grainy. So that's one thing to keep, keep in the back of your mind. You can actually feel the texture of the grain in the bowl. But um, it's, I really like the two-tone effect of the, the heartwood and the late wood or early wood, late wood. Uh, it's, it's a really cool, and you know, surprisingly enough, this is white ash and it's not, it's not real heavy. I know that a lot of people think that ash is really hard. I've, I've turned swamp ash, white ash, black ash, and um, they're all relatively the same. As, as long as you got sharp tools, you won't have any issues at all. Uh, in this video, I believe I sharpened eight times because I know that's probably going to be a question. And along with that, I value those eight bowls at $1,000. So if I was at a show and here in Canada, I would put, I'd put $1,000 on all eight of those bowls to give you an idea of what the cost of what it would be to buy those bowls. Because I know that's probably going to be a question as well. Uh, so I realized that this wasn't a New Year's theme project. That's actually going to be next week. Uh, we still haven't hit 80,000 at the filming of this. Uh, the reason for that is because I had I had family coming in and I just didn't want to tie up a lot of my time out here in the workshop. I want to spend a lot of time with them. So, you know, I did have to work a little bit through the week here, but, you know, it wasn't too bad. So um, next week will be a big wine glass. My wife asked me, hey, can you make a big wine glass that we can put corks in? So... I've already cast the, the top part of that, so we'll see how that goes. I've never been down that road yet. So uh, we're going to give that a go. That's, that's going to be next week. So, you know, as we come to the end of this year, I'd like to personally thank all of you who have watched my videos, who have subscribed to my channel. It has been an awesome year. And to give you an idea, I've got some stuff written down here. Uh, my analytics tell me that... 45,000 subscribers this year and you know that's that's amazing I didn't think that I would ever get that many to begin with so thank you so much for subscribing 8.7 million views this year as well and 2.1 million watch hours wow thank you so much I really do appreciate it hopefully next year will even be bigger and better uh, so yes Thanks so much for that. And the last thing that I want to do is the resin block. Uh, we haven't done the draw on that yet, but I did run the names through the uh, YouTube random comment picker, and it has picked out Brad Edgington. Congratulations, you are the winner of the resin block. So please send me your details to Sprague Wood Turning at gmail.com and I will get your uh, your resin block mailed out to you. I think there was around 65 people commented. So uh, Brad Edgington, you are the winner. So congratulations. So we haven't hit 80,000 yet. I, re I realize again that everybody's kind of tied up with the holidays. So um, that, that will come here probably very shortly. So I'm not really all that concerned about it. So. I'm assuming after I do the wine glass next week that we'll be over 80,000 and then that's when we'll do the 80,000 giveaway of something. I don't know what it's going to be. I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, okay, well that's it. So thanks again for watching my channel. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great new year and I guess that's it. We'll see you next week. Take care, stay safe, don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. See you next week. Happy New Year.